So today we're talking with Lindsay who joined the program and then hit the ground running. Within a month, they secured a property that they don't even have to own and made $17,500 in bookings within a week. So in today's episode, we're gonna go over that exact listing, her thought process behind everything and also her strategy. This episode is full of golden nuggets that you don't wanna miss, so check it out. All right, uh, looks like we're live. So uh, we have Lindsay Fisher here on the call. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. So first and foremost, you know, just want to kind of get to know your background. Obviously, you know, you, you and your husband have been you know, crushing it with your newest Airbnb, getting over 12,000 bookings in a short amount of time. But let's kind of take a step back first for a moment and talk about what led you to this journey. Let's, you know, we can start there. Instagram is how I found out about you. I found out about the world of Airbnb arbitrage. It was July 2nd. It was a long weekend and I was actually chilling on this couch and I came across your free work like workshop and it was only an hour long and then you were like you can stay on if you want to keep and I, that would end up being three hours and my husband's like what are you doing i was like we have got to talk about this as soon as as soon as i got off of there so i think we both work nine to fives and i just turned 40 this summer he just turned 37 we want to get out of the rat race of nine to five and so we've been looking for passive income and we're doing small things here and there but nothing that would actually be significant enough to get us out of the nine to five we want more I think the biggest thing would be financial freedom and time freedom. You know, like we're not getting any younger and we want to travel. There's so much we want to do. So we saw that on there. And then that same day we ordered it and started watching the modules together. And we're like, let's do this. Let's see what happens. And we just got married a year and a half ago. So this was a new adventure, even as a married couple to, you know, finances is can be a sticking point for couples. And it's just neat that we both hopped in on this together. And I think it's been great for our marriage, weirdly enough, in all of this too. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Usually it can uh, tear you apart if you guys aren't on the, on the same page, but you know, glad to hear that you guys have, are on the same page, you know, <laughs> with the same goals and all that, you know, obviously that's, you know, great background. A lot of people, you know, find out about financial freedom, you know, whatever, you know, that kind of like it clicks with them in different stages of life. Right. So what made it really click for you this time around? Cause I'm sure you've thought about it, you know, maybe in your thirties, maybe even in your twenties. So what made it click for you at your age right now? Actually, I know that you talked about how you went on a mission overseas for a while with your church. I actually worked for like a, a Christian nonprofit overseas for over a decade and came back to the state three weeks before the COVID shutdown started. I knew I wanted to pivot to something in the job market. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And then during COVID, I met my husband. And so I think I've been kind of on this, like I've been t having jobs just to pay the bills, but looking for something that gets me really excited and something that would allow me to spend more time with my husband. I think before when I was single and overseas, there wasn't anything pulling me away from my job. Like my life was my my job because I like the mission of it. But now that we're married, I'm like, oh, I don't want to go there for eight hours. I want to figure out how to spend more time with you. And so that was really what made it click was how can I spend more than just the two and a half hours at the end of the day with my husband? Like, how can I get way more time and only spend two and a half hours working a day so that we can enjoy the rest of our lives? You know, like we met later in life. So we got time to make up. Yeah, no, that, that's great. I, I think definitely, you know, when you're single, your priorities are different. You know, you can kind of, you know, grind yourself in your career, get lost in that. And I think that's, you know, great for some people. But once, you know, your priorities change, you kind of start thinking at things differently. So, you know, definitely went through the same things myself. But, you know, what's kind of your background and what made you want to start, you know, this Airbnb journey? I grew up here in North Carolina, like we're in North Carolina, our properties in North Carolina. I grew up here and went to college in the mountains here. I always loved the mountains and wanted to figure out how I could get there again one day without a second mortgage yet because we just bought the house we're in a year ago. And then, of course, I've introduced my husband to the mountains and he, he loves them as well. So our background really is he's been in sales his whole life. I did the nonprofit world. I'm currently working. Um, I sell insurance like home auto life insurance, that kind of thing. And while it's great to get to meet people and help them with that part of life, it's not a passion. <laughs> and, and I think the more I kind of learned about who I am, which is something I think people figure out as they get older. I learned that I love networking. I love home design. I love making money and not like worrying about finances all the time. And, and I love traveling. And so this oddly enough kind of combined all of those strengths and enjoy like things I enjoy in life. And so I have found that while there's some challenges, I've really enjoyed this whole journey. Um, and it's worked well for both of our strengths in life too. So how did you find and choose your first property? I know you mentioned it's kind of in your backyard. It sounds like, you know, near you. So how did you, you know, I'm, I'm sure you had some expertise, you know, with this market sounds like, but yeah, how did you go about finding your and choosing your first property? Yeah. So we used your module. So we, you know, did figured out rev pars. We put up the modules on the TV and I had a laptop and 
my husband would go through, we used air DNA, of course, and, you know, we'll figure out what's the occupancy rate, what's the average daily rate, is this going to be a market? And there were actually some, like my, where I went to college, I thought was going to be like a home run and it was not on there, but the surrounding areas were. So we actually got a place uh, not far outside of Asheville. It's about 30 minutes outside of Asheville and it's an up and coming market that I was shocked did so well on Airbnb. So we called a few places. I did all the landlord calls and this was actually only our fourth call that we did that we got this place. The very first one we did, this guy was super nice. His HOA was just actually in the middle of a court battle with him to not allow him to do Airbnb. Yeah, talk to this lady. She received everything really well. I think she had, you know, tinkered with the idea of using it as an Airbnb as well and was looking, she's in the middle of a move. So she actually was looking at leaving it like 75% for it. So that's one of the reasons it looks so nice is that those nice leather couches, things like that, she left behind for us and of course ran it into the rent, but it, it's worth it. So that's how we found that first one. We talked to her about like she even, she had heard the term Airbnb arbitrage, but she didn't understand what it was, but just in her own dealings with Airbnb, she had heard it. So we explained it and we first spoke to her on my birthday, which was July 21st. And we signed the contract on his birthday, which was August 11th. So it was a really quick, it was pretty quick turnaround. And we just knew we wanted to get it on the market as soon as we could because the fall is peak season up here with the Western North Carolina mountains. So we were pressing them a little bit of like, can we do this? And yeah. And and so that's where we are. Yeah. And I, I really like uh, what you said, like in, in your mind, you're like, okay, you know, this market is going to crush it. Your old call it town. And then, you know, as you started looking at the data, you're like, okay, maybe the numbers don't make sense. That's why, you know, I always harp on running the numbers, making sure that you follow the data well, with the reliable data source, you know, love air DNA you know, with what they put out. And that way you can make a good decision. Cause a lot of times people just go with their gut feeling. And a lot of times that gut feeling might be wrong. Right. So you know, going through that and, you know, love the story of, you know, on, literally on your fourth person, sometimes not of, like for me, for example, it took me like over a hundred calls to, you know, find my first person to, to, you know, really move forward. So what what did you say, you know, what's kind of like in your script or your pitch to, uh, to you know, get them to trust you and also, you know, eventually close a deal? So we started with Zillow was the was our main way of using it. We also reached reach out to a few people on Facebook Marketplace. I would just write them. My kind of intro was, hey, beautiful property, would you consider doing a two to four year lease? So before I explained anything else, I just would see if they're even open to that. And then if they were, I wanted to try and get them on the phone to try and woo them over with my personality and my, and just my competence. Just what you said, you, one of the parts of the script you always say is like, I, I'll be the best tenant you've ever had. You know, that there's a guaranteed check every month and all those things, no parties. And so I knew if I could get them on the phone, and that would be great. But if I asked them anything through text, it would probably not go well or through a message. So did that, talk to her. The other landlords were great too. I talked to four total and all of them received everything really well. Some just were in zoning areas. And that was something you talked about too, was, you know, figure out the permits, but also don't do so much in-depth research that you're just wasting time. And so that was something we tried to really fight against too, is, hey, let's just, let's just make the calls and bite the bullet and see what happens rather than getting stuck in like, the quicksand of research. So that was how it went, kind of explained everything of, I, I really just used everything that you've talked about in the script of, hey, I want this to be a win-win for both of us. I'm not trying to pull one over on you. Like, what is it that you need? What, you know, how can I, you know, come alongside of you to make it great for both of us? So that was really the, the angle that we went with. And so far it's gone really well. Yeah, and, and obviously just like the way you talk, um, you know, I'm sure your, your husband, you, you said is in sales as well. Like there's no, you don't have to like have like these weird slimy, you know, sales tactics, right? You're just yeah. literally having a, yeah conversation with the other person and if you do that and you know they you know build that rapport and build that trust like you can close deals even with no experience which obviously you guys were able to do so you know awesome job on that love the property you know kind of going through every single thing that i talk about and harp on you know in the program if you don't mind you know that just kind of walk through the different pictures of your you know you're kind of like your mindset of like going in you know what was already here what you added uh to really uh, you know get it to plot pop because you know obviously your your, your place looks awesome so if you want to just kind of go through we can just go through the pictures and go go from there absolutely so first thing we did so a lot of the major furniture in the living areas were already there. We came in and added a lot of, I guess, homier things to make it. There was a vibe or a feel we wanted to the cabin, which was, you know, cozy. So there's, I built in a bookshelf that's there. I brought a lot of books that people would want to read, you know, little signs, basket of blankets. And it says, let's get cozy. We went ahead and did some fall decor there as well, um, because that is why 
most people come up there is in the fall season. And then the other thing we did was we transformed the downstairs the most. So we put some black wallpaper on that wall behind the TV. And then we actually put up all college pennants. So that way, if it's football season, you've got your team up there. If it's basketball season, you've got your team up there. And then we wanted to give this vibe of, you know, guys getting to just uh, four girls hanging out, you know, like having a good time shooting pool, playing on the card table and, you know, getting to watch the game. So that was the thought down there. And then there's also this greenery wall that we created. Downstairs, we have a sign there that says, hey, take a photo and tag us on our social media. You'll get 10% off of your next visit, you know? So we tried to incorporate marketing into it. So we named it the Old Fort Cabin. We made a social media Instagram handle with the Old Fort Cabin. So we tried to integrate that as well. So it would be memorable. You know, there's sometimes where cabins aren't named or properties are not named or they're harder to remember. And so we intentionally named it something that people could remember so they'll come back to it and we'll have repeat guests. The other major thing we did was we changed all the bedding. It had been just one king bed and then some twin beds, a full. And so we came in and changed it so that it would be three kings and only and one queen. That one that's right there with the plant hanging, you just physically couldn't get a king in there. But the rest of them, I know when my husband and I travel, we look for king bed and we look for hot tubs. And so those were the two things we wanted to make sure were true there. We turned the garage into a ping pong and dart room, painted a mural on the back of the garage wall. So we wanted to access and I guess, utilize every space we could in there. And then we've, you know, as you can see, we also did the deck, added some sofas and fire pit, a dining table outside. And then we invested in a hot tub, which is below the deck as well. We saw that on the air DNA, it showed that less than 20% of that area had a hot tub. So we wanted to make sure we did that just to stand out. We're working on some new photos. We've got lights hanging up under there now, and it looks, it looks a lot nicer than, than that photo from when the uh, photographer came that day. And that's another thing is, you know, we paid money for a nice photographer to really accentuate the house that people would see it and think of an experience and also that they would see it and, you know, could imagine, hey, there's, I could see my family here. I could imagine, you know, like a high school reunion or a college reunion, things like that. We also included baby gates, cribs, things like that so that families can have those amenities when they come and bring their family. Yeah. No, huge. Like, you know, obviously you put a lot of thought and care into every single item and that's really how you, you know, build up that repeat clientele. Also, you know, thinking about families, right? Because you you have your target audience that you want to go after, which is families, you know, celebrating, you know, graduation, you know, the fall. And obviously like there are times where I'm like looking to book a place myself and now, you know, having kids, you know, like a pack and play or, you know, something as simple as like a high chair or something like that. If they don't have it, then it's almost like, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to book this place even if it looks great. So, you know, having that family person and that target uh, persona in mind, I'm sure is, you know, going to pay dividends in the future as well. Yeah, that's the hope. That is hope. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. We're actually at, um, as of this morning, we're at 17,500 for wow. bookings through New Year's Eve. That's awesome. And you guys went live, what was it, mid-August? We went live two weeks ago. Oh, wow. So it's yeah. been, like, so today's September 21st. And so you went live like second September week of 7th. September? September 7th, yeah. Awesome. On our way to my family's vacation um, at the beach, we I set it up on my phone on the way down there. So uh, it's only been two weeks and we have 14 bookings. That's awesome. It's no surprise, right? Like a lot of people think, you know, take a couple of dinky photos posted on Airbnb like pray for bookings but you clearly have a strategy you follow the strategy in place to get you know to where you are so that's awesome talk to me about your first booking because you know I think that especially with your first listing right you know, you post it and you're kind of just sitting there twiddling your thumbs you know hoping so like I want to kind of talk or hear about your first guest experience you know was it a nightmare was it great like if you can talk to us a little bit more about that as far as the booking or the actual them staying there let's let's go with like the actual person staying there okay so that is happening literally right now they got yesterday so we went live we figured people wouldn't book like immediately and so we actually we went live before we were ready so we just blocked out the next week and a half but we wanted to at least get it up there but we have some people staying there right now we actually have some influencers there that are going to post for us we made ours dog friendly that was another thing that you had discussed and i'd read other places that you know pet friendly places are not as common and so it's good if you can be that as well we've got a great cleaner and a great handyman that we have found that have done a fantastic job so far. The girls that are staying there messaged last night and said, hey, this place looks like this place looks incredible. It's beautiful, well decorated. It's really clean. So I think they're having a great time and we'll see what they say, you know, whenever they leave. But it was one of our kind of marketing strategies. Um, they have like 120,000 followers. So we're like, hey, what if we comp a stay and then they'll share about our cabin just to get the word out as fast as possible. And so that's what they're doing. But then the first real paying customer or like guests are coming on Saturday. And uh, I'm excited and nervous, you know, you live and die by your reviews and 
they would possibly be our first review. We're excited. I think we've done everything we can to, you know, to make it work. And it's always exciting when you get those text messages that say you have a new booking. It feels like all the hard work is it's been worth it. Just hopefully that all the guests will have the same experience that we want them to have. Yeah, no, for sure. And having that trust that boots on the ground team, if you're not physically there, is huge, right? So, you know, issues do occur, you know, because they always do inevitably, right? In any sort of business, you know, you have some, a trusted person that can go and take care of things. So that way, you know, you're not having to wake up in the middle of the night and take care of all that. So that that's all good, great stuff. And I'm sure, with especially with how you're booking out, it's going to be pretty smooth sailing here from here on out. That's the hope. We've started talking about another property already. So <laughs> I was going to say that's that's a good segue. So what what are, what are your guys' goals with your portfolio of, you know, how, how much you want to scale? Because clearly, you have you, know, you guys have the chops to you know scale this pretty quickly so what are your, some of your goals here from, from from here on out so i think we are so this one was big investment obviously the first one even though there's an incredible discount you know buying air dna or getting our llc it's not crazy expensive but there's just a lot of front end there's just more front end costs on top of the property itself so i think we want to in the next four months land on our second property if it was up to me i'd be like let's do it next week but um, financially as we decide together he's like four months i'm like okay we can do four months. Our thought is that we will continue to get properties every four to six months to the point where we will eventually both not be in our nine to fives anymore. I would think that after the fourth or fifth property, we would want to look at purchasing and actually buying some real estate. But we have actually had some, you talk about how to finance things. We did some 0%, you know, 24 month, no interest type of thing so that we could buy the hot tub and pay the electrician. And by the way, hot tubs are needed. They're, make sure you count all the costs before you do it. That's the thing that, that was our surprising challenge was how much it was to get the hot tub. So I've actually started looking on when I look on Zillow now, I put that as one of the requirements for the rentals to see if it's already there. And so I'm actually talking to someone right now who's looking to rent starting in December and he's already, he's already got the fire pit. He's already got the hot tub and uh, it would just, it would make the setup so much quicker for us to start another property and start listing it. So down the road, I mean, this is something where we'd love for it to become what we do for our income and for the rest of our lives so that we can just enjoy staying at some of those houses and traveling and not having to stick to the nine to five grind anymore. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. And, and so for projections on this property, uh, what are we looking at from a cash flow perspective for for this property here? On a monthly basis? Yeah, if we could just narrow it, yeah, boil it down to monthly. Again, this is our highest. This is the peak um, would be now until January. But right now, it's going to be somewhere between twenty five to 3000 would be our cash flow over like the once the expenses are done, you know? So that cash flow would be once we pay the rent, pay the utilities and everything, that would be in our pocket. It would be between twenty five and 3000 That's awesome. And, you know, just a few more of those and, you know, you'll well on your way to financial freedom, right? And that's why I love this model, right? Because it doesn't take a lot of properties. Like you know, before, you know, I got into real estate, I thought I had to have, you know, a thousand doors to, to ever retire. But, you know, there's other methods, you know, different way. This is just, you know, one of those methods where you can get to financial freedom much quicker. Right. There's way less risk. You know, like we just got this house last year, so we weren't going to turn around and, and set up a second mortgage. This is a great way to get your foot in the door, make money, why you're figuring out where do I want to invest larger chunks? You know, where do we want to purchase? Especially if you're not, if you don't have any experience in the real estate market, like we, like us, this has been a great way for us to get our feet wet, make some money, but also, you know, like help curb the risk and ha be more educated in where we want to purchase. hundred percent agree. Um, I always recommend the same. Even if people have the capital, I always tell, tell them to go this route just because it gets their feet wet. You have a property up and running. There's much less risk involved than getting another mortgage, right? So because that, that's a whole different beast. But yeah, you know, totally, totally agree with what, what you're saying. So another question I'd like to ask is, you know, now that, you know, everything's up and running, how, how, like how much time per week do you, are you typically you know, spending, you know, managing, assuming that you guys are managing the property yourselves right now? Yeah. So we're managing So the the property, it's in our backyard because it's in the same state, but it's still a two and a half hour drive from our house. Right. So we do have our cleaner is kind of like our property manager and stuff, or she's our designated person in a lot of ways. You know, she'll bring in mail for us, things like that. And then the handyman as well. So with the two of them right now, I would say I probably spend 30 minutes a day working on some form of advertising. So coming up with doing the reels or whatever it is on Instagram to just promote us more. I've also joined a bunch of groups 
you know, for North Carolina vacation rentals. So when I see people post, hey, we're a family of eight trying to find a place, you know, you put your listing on there. So I'd say maybe 30 minutes a day I'm spending just trying to promote more. But as far as the house itself, I mean, it, it's just doing its thing, you know? So I would say in total, maybe three hours a week. That's awesome. Because a lot of people don't believe that. They're like, there's no way that you're spending that little time. But you know, once you get the systems and processes up and running, and you can even further down the line, as you scale more, you can even, you know, step back even further by hiring. Okay you know, virtual assistants and whatnot, like Mm -hmm. even, you know, with your first few properties, like it really does not take that much time to, you know, to manage. So there's that for the people that are the the doubters that don't actually believe it only takes a couple hours per week. And I think it's also part of your personality. And, you know, like I enjoy the engagement that I'm doing. I don't have to do it. You know, most of our bookings have come straight from Airbnb. They're not necessarily coming from this other. It's just that I enjoy that part of it. Um, I could step away and do less if I wanted to, but I enjoy this hands-on part of it. Our The next property we're looking at is in a city that's close to where our current one is. So our handyman and our cleaners still work that area. So we're actually thinking of how can we do another one that an easy setup because we wouldn't have to create a whole nother team for it. But no, there's no lie. It's really just a few hours a week right now. And, and then it, the system kind of does itself, you know? Possible. Well, I know you're busy. So, you know, before we hop off here, what advice would you have to someone that's, you know, considering starting their own journey, Airbnb, business entrepreneurship? Yeah, what would you say to that person? It seems like a lot and it seems maybe terrifying to take that risk. But, you know, we're only a month and a half in and we're already like it is completely worth the risk. And I think that's why so many people get stuck in live and schedules and you know these nine to fives whatever it is you get stuck in these lives and you just watch and say maybe one day i'll do it when this is more secure this is more secure and i would say just do it airbnb is alive and kicking it's not dying and i can already see it's going to change the trajectory of how we get to live our lives together that's awesome and that's that's really what it's all about again well thanks so much Lindsay, for hopping on you know all the best to to mr fisher as well even though he uh did start did this <laughs> call here today i know but- <laughs> no. He did the best. He said the best. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Well, have a good night. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Lindsay.